Hello guys and gals and welcome. So I've been making videos um, going over all the aspects from the Codex of Power. Now the Codex of Power doesn't incorporate all the legendaries, so do keep that in mind. And also the Codex of Power is um, only going to be in the minimum version of that particular Codex entry. So you can find legendaries which are much more powerful version. All right, so keep that in mind. In this video, we're going to be going over the Sorceress and Sorcerer only Codex of Power entries. So the first one we're going to be going over is the aspect of the Biting Cold. When you freeze an enemy, there is a 25% chance that they will become vulnerable for three seconds. Now, vulnerability is a 20% increase in damage. Um, it actually says it right down there at the bottom of the tooltip. And frozen enemies cannot move or attack. Enemies can be frozen by repeatedly chilling them. So this is something that I found out uh, because I do have a chilling effect on my traps in. And as they stood in the freely chilling effect, the more that they stood in the chilling effect, the more times they got chilled, it would eventually um, culminate in a freeze effect. So you can freeze monsters with m repeated chill effects. Uh, so this is an interesting way that you can gain an additional 20% damage if you are running a freeze or chill build. Uh, next on the list is the aspect of the bounding conduit. Uh, the aspect of the bounding conduit is... Uh, gain 20% movement speed for 3 seconds after teleporting. Um, so this will give you a nice little, little, little speed buff if you want to use your teleport a lot. Uh, we have Aspect of Conflagration. Uh, aspect of Conflagration is while channeling Incinerate, your burning damage is increased by 20%. So uh, that's actually pretty powerful because there are a lot of different sources of burning. And you could have everything on the screen burning at one time. In fact, I researched the burning sorceress myself, and I didn't actually play her, but uh, I may. And... Um, Man, you could be you could literally have like almost six different unique forms of burning on a monster at any given time. So the general idea that uh, while channeling you would increase all of your burning damage by 20% um, might actually add up to a lot. Uh, next on the list is the aspect of control. Uh, you deal 30% more damage to immobilized, stunned, or frozen enemies. Uh, so this is definitely a good one to pick up for a crowd control sorceress or a freezing sorceress. Um, and um, it's pretty nice little bump in damage there for any type of sorceress. This is going to be using a lot of crowd control effects. And uh, crowd control effects seem to just kind of incorporate a lot. But this one is specifically immobilized, stunned, or frozen. Next is the aspect of efficiency. Casting a basic skill reduces the mana cost of your next core skill by 10%. Now, I did find that I was often casting basic skills, even though they didn't really do very much damage. So it may um, give some utility to those basic skills that you wouldn't have to use as much mana on your next ability. Uh, of course, it depends on whether your next ability is actually a mana hogging ability. Um, or, you know, some, some of the abilities honestly didn't really cost that much mana. And this wouldn't be all that great for them. Um, next is the aspect of piercing cold. Uh, ice shards pierce three times, uh, dealing 25% less damage per subsequent enemy hit. So it just sounds like a very nice way to beef up your ice shards ability um, so that it can hit more targets at any given time, uh, which could have you know various other effects depending on what special uh, things that you have attached to your ice shards. You know, if your ice shards are chilling or freezing or stunning or making monsters vulnerable or whatever it may be, hitting more monsters could potentially give you more of those effects. So, uh, Next is the aspect of the singed extremities. After immobilize wears off, enemies are slowed by 25% for 4 seconds. Uh, we also have aspect of the static cling. Uh, your casts of charged bolts have a 15% chance to be attracted to enemies and last 300% longer. So this is almost like a, a magnet for your charged bolts. So your charged bolts are all hitting the same target. I'm assuming, you know, there probably is like a magnetic range, so to speak. And like once it passes that range, it probably won't work. But also lasting 300% longer means that there's a good chance that they're actually going to hit more targets, uh, which is definitely very nice as well. So definitely a good one if you want to try and play around with a charged bolt sorceress. Uh, next on the list is the aspect of the three curses. 
Um, kind of sounds like one that would be on the Necromancer, but it's not. Uh, meteors deal 35% increased damage, increased critical strike damage against healthy targets. And as you can see down here at the bottom, it says healthy targets are 80% or higher life. Um, so generally, this is going to be something that's going to be a very nice effect for you if the monsters have full health, essentially. And um, then we have the aspect of the unwavering. Uh, taking direct damage has a 5% chance to reset the cooldowns of one of your defensive skills. Um, so this will help you, obviously, in a dangerous situation, because if you're in there getting beat down, and your defensive skill is on cooldown, um, this will um, reset the cooldown of your defensive skill and help you to become even more tanky, because then you can put your ice armor or your flame armor um, you know, back on. Um, next is the aspect of uh, charged aspect. Uh, collecting crackling energy increases your movement speed by 10% for 4 seconds. Uh, my my ball sorceress uh, <laughs> probably would definitely like this one. Uh, she's got crackling energies coming out of everywhere. And um, next is the elementalist aspect. Elementalist aspect is a core or mastery skills cast at or above 100 mana gain a 20% increased critical strike chance. So this one I was looking at it um, back when I was on beta, and I was like, this looks kind of op the problem with this though is that you only get that 20 percent increased critical strike chance if you cast it while you're at full mana which means that this would have to be a component of a build where you just never run out of mana so you would just have like an infinite source of mana and if you had that infinite source of mana this would definitely be something you want to add in there because a 20 percent crit kit crit strike chance is kind of insane especially when you combine it with what other whatever other crits you've got running um next is the flame walkers aspect um, coming in contact with your firewall grants you a 15% movement speed for 4 seconds. So if you're a firewall sorceress, you can run through your firewall and gain some extra speed buffs. Um, incendiary aspect. Lucky hit. Burning damage has up to a 5% chance to restore 10 mana. Um, that actually seems broken OP because, like I said before, you can have like a million sources of burning damage on all the targets nearby, just pulling your mana back in. And... Um, that may be a component of the uh, what we were talking about earlier, the sorceress with the infinite mana, because um, I can imagine that if you've got enough burning damage, sources of burning damage on targets, your mana would just be pouring back in, even at a 5% chance, because there are just so many different sources of burning damage that you could potentially have procking on all of the targets. Uh, next is the Prodigies aspect, which is using a cooldown restores 15 mana. So uh, if you have a uh, kind of a low cooldown, you could use that to just kind of like spam it and get more mana back. This one seems like a nice one only if you're going to be combining it with um, like maybe cooldown reduction equipment or um, a ability that doesn't necessarily have the most ridiculously large cooldown. I mean, obviously, if you've got like a 70 second cooldown ability, this isn't going to be very useful. Um, recharging aspect. Each time Chain Lightning bounces off you, gain 4 mana. Uh, definitely would have liked to have had this for my Chain Lightning uh, lightning Sorceress, but um, it's not something that I can get, I don't think. Yeah, Progress Campaign into Fractured Peace. Um, but it looks very nice for the Chain Lightning Sorceress, because honestly there's also another... Another legendary effect that you can get that increases the number of bounces of Chain Lightning. Um, so every time you fire Chain Lightning, it's going to bounce off. And um, when you're fighting a boss or something like that, you can essentially just spam it because it, there's only two targets, you and him. So you're just going to bounce the Chain Lightning back and forth off of yourself. And um, next is the Snow Guards aspect. Uh, while within your own blizzard, you take 10% less damage. So it gives you a little bit of a defensive bump there for, uh, you know, just sitting in your own blizzard. Um, then there is the Snow Veiled aspect, uh, which is casting ice armor makes you unstoppable for two seconds. And as you can see down there in the bottom, unstoppable characters have all control impairing effects removed and prevented. So basically you are 
kind of immune to any kind of control pairing effects, uh, which is good because if you're using ice armor, there's a good chance you're in danger. Unless you're just preemptively using it to prevent the danger. But uh, if you're in danger, having the Unstoppable will make it so that you'll be able to get out of that danger, which is nice. Uh, Storm Swell. This is the last of the uh, aspects for the Sorceress on the Codex of Power. Uh, and this is Storm Swell Aspect. You deal 11% increased damage to vulnerable enemies. Um, and keep in mind that vulnerable enemies already take 20% increased damage when they are vulnerable. Um while you have a barrier active. Um, so if you are going to be using a barrier and building a vulnerable build, um, this will give you even more damage versus those same vulnerable monsters. Um, and I think that's pretty much it for the Sorceress. Um, in total, there was, uh, what is it? Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 different aspects of uh, in the Codex of Power for the Sorceress. And um, I'm not really sure if that's more or less than the other characters, but I'm going to be going over the other characters soon, so I guess I'll find out. Um, there's definitely some very interesting ones in here, but it does seem like some of the cooler and um, more interesting ones are locked behind you know, actually finding them. Although it's very nice that you have this Codex of Power to pull from because it does allow you to make the character builds um, and then you know, actually have the functional character while you're searching for the better versions throughout the world. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, even when we're just talking about the Sorceress Codex of Power entries. And as always, keep watching.